Hello and welcome to another edition of the coronavirus chats here on the News News platform. I'm your host, BJ Murphy, publisher of newsnews.com. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's tuned in to these chats. We hope they have been very informative for you as you go about uh, trying to make the best decisions for your family, for your business, uh, for your neighborhood, your community. And just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's watching, everybody who shared this broadcast. I'm uh, really excited to have uh, Dr. Pradeep on today to kind of talk about uh, the testing and the medical supplies. Uh, we've got a, a slew of, of things we want to chat about. Uh, some FDA and LabCorp came out with uh, some news this week as well. Uh, there's, so there's some things that we will talk about how we, how we as a community, how we as a state and a nation start moving forward in this uh, or continue to bunker down. So we're going to have that conversation here uh, in just a little bit. So if you don't mind, please go ahead and share the broadcast uh, with, with your friends. Uh, a couple things I want to mention first. Uh, we now have 7,220 cases across the state of North Carolina. Uh, there have been 242 deaths, unfortunately, and uh, there have been well over 90,000 tests uh, for the virus uh, in, in our state. Jones County has had nine cases with two deaths. Lenore has had 27 cases with one death, and Greene County has had 14 cases with uh, zero deaths. Uh, on News News today, we uh, published a, a, an article about uh, Dixon Foods McDonald's. So here's a, a couple. We got a couple of good uh, feel good stories for today. Uh, Dixon Foods McDonald's. They are giving out free thank you meals to first responders and to healthcare professionals now through May the 5th. All you got to do is uh, show that ID. The details are on our newsdews.com platform. So go check out that story and make sure you share that. Uh, with our first responders uh, and our healthcare professionals uh, it is something that they want to make sure to get the word out. The free thank you meals from McDonald's. Uh, Lenore County Cooperative Extension and the Lenore County SBCA have teamed up to make sure that uh, no uh, innocent, beloved family pet uh, should go hungry during this crisis. And uh, so there is, a, is called, the project is called No Empty Bowls. And we've got the details on how you can either donate to that cause or sign up to be a recipient of that. They want to make sure that all the, the family pets in our community are fed. I think this is a worthwhile call. So we were we rushed to get that story published and sent out as, as fast as we could. Uh, so please uh, go check that out and help support uh, the Lenore County Cooperative Extension Office as well as the North County SPCA. I think it's a worthy cause uh, for, for them. In fact, we may even... Uh, post the, the link to that story in the comments here. Uh, Dr. Travis Town is helping on the, the back end. Uh, Leaf the Thrower is helping on the social media. So if one of them wouldn't mind uh, sharing that story, would I would definitely appreciate it. Also, uh, we have started doing, uh, uh, whether it was intended or not, but these questions of the day in our We Report News News Facebook group, it's got a, a lot of uh, great conversation, constructive conversation happening. Uh, today's uh, uh, Facebook, uh, we report news news, Facebook question of the day is, if the restrictions are loosened on May 1st, if the governor re starts uh, releasing some of these restrictions on May 1st, uh, will you continue to shelter in place? Uh, so we think that's a very fair question for us to answer as a, as a community. So just go to WeReportNewsNews.com and you could answer that question there. And uh, right now we have a special message from our friends at Lenore Community College. And we certainly appreciate our friends at Lenore Community College, Dr. Rusty Hunt, uh, his entire admin team, Richie Smith, Honeycutt. We just want to say a big thank you to them, uh, wishing the, the, the staff and the students the best as they close out this, uh, this semester, as they talk about what's happening uh, for the summer and in the fall. Please make sure you go to their website, lenorecc.edu 
to get all the latest COVID-19 um, information and updates as they possibly can give to you. Uh, hey, look, and I saw as we were doing showing that video, I want to say a big thank you to Pastor Daryl Carnegie uh, for giving us stars. That is something new for us. Facebook gave us that access not too long ago. So if you'll see in the comment section, you have the ability to uh, now give us stars, which basically you buy a small pack of stars. I don't even know how much they are, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. And for every star we receive, we receive a penny of that. So if you buy 500 stars for us, uh, we, we, that's five bucks that goes towards the call. So uh, we're a free platform. And so we just want to say thanks to all our partners. So you see an ad on our website and our newsletter. Please make sure you click on it and share and support them. And if you're watching a live broadcast like this, you have an opportunity to share uh, and give stars. We, we just want to say thank you so much for that. So thank you, Pastor Daryl Carnegie, for the stars already. Now I'd like to bring on Dr. Pradeep, who's a cardiologist here in our neighborhood. Uh, Dr. Pradeep is no stranger to this platform. He is somebody who's been studying the statistics uh, all around what's happening with COVID-19 since the very beginnings while we talked to him early on about coming on the show. Thank you for being with us again, Doc. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yes, sir. And I, I see you're dressed down, not in the scrubs today. So it looks like you're enjoying a day at the house. I actually went to work, but I was sick and tired of wearing scrubs. So I decided to change up today. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, let, let's, let's jump right into it. Uh, you know, we were actually having a little bit of conversation ahead of time uh, about uh, the testing numbers. Like I mentioned a while ago that there have been 90,000 tests across the state of North Carolina. Let's Let's talk a little bit about uh, things you're seeing about ways we can ramp up testing and how that affects something uh, like what we were talking about a while ago about the death rate and things like that. So, you know, when we talk about testing, we still don't have enough tests. We still are rationing tests. It is not the equipment that is important, uh, that is that we don't have. Um, most of these hospitals by now have all the equipment they need, but the problem though is the reagents. You know, every hospital out there is testing, right? So if you think about it, if, if every hospital is out, out there testing, you're going to run out of reagents. So, but compared to two weeks ago, it is a it is way better. Now, um, and when patients come, let's say a patient calls me and says, um, I have a fever, uh, you know, I feel like I might have COVID-19, but I'm not short of breath. I feel good. What I would tell them is most people, what they would tell them is to stay home. You don't need to be tested. You can be quarantined for self-quarantine for two weeks. OK, now, which means that patient may be COVID positive, but we have not put them in the system. If you have not put them in the system, then that means, you know, oh, you are reducing the number of true positives. Um, thereby falsely increasing your death rate. So the death rate right now in North Carolina, when I um, look at it, I forget exactly what it was. It's closer to like 3% or something like that, 2.45 or something like that. So uh, nationally, it's around 5.5%. Um, uh, you know, in North Carolina, it's 2.5 because we are still behind the curve at this time. So it may not be 5.5, you know, uh, it's probably closer to 1% or less than 1%, but who knows? There, there's no way to really know. The only way to really know would be right. if you tested 100% of the people and then found out who were positive, okay? So as soon as we ramp up the testing, the number of cases will go up and the mortality will go down, okay? So, but I still don't think it is going to be as low as the flu, okay? Um, because the cases I have seen, they're very sick. I've seen, um, you know, two of my patients have died with it. And both of them, uh, they were not healthy um, um, uh, human beings in the first place. They were unhealthy, but not as unhealthy as you would think, you know. So, um, and, uh, and uh, you know, it's not something we want to see, but we, we will have be forced to see a lot more in the coming days. And if I thought I heard you correctly, you said you've actually had two patients to die of COVID-19. Uh, when I say two patients die, um, you know, uh, anyway, you know, I, 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 obviously we can't give details. So, no, yes, uh, two of my patients, that's, I'm not saying they died here. Okay. Right. No, no, that's, uh, but, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's, it's something we haven't talked about here because I didn't know, but 
but I, a, as a doctor, uh, how, how does, you know, what goes through your mind? I mean, I, I, I know you're probably accustomed to seeing people at their worst who are fighting for their life, but to see that happen mm-hmm. and knowing how much conversation we've had about this, how does that, how does that make you feel? So the, this one, um, you know, most of these people, they come in, you know, the, the ones I have seen, they, they don't come in that sick. I mean, they have fever, they're a little short of breath, they're still talking to you. And then over the next few days, they either recover or they go really bad. And but the ones that go bad, you know, the chance of them coming back is very small. I mean, if you get them on a ventilator, your mm-hmm. chance of dying is very high. You know, and that's all studies have shown that if you get on a ventilator, I don't think it's because of the ventilator as such. It is just because of the disease process and your blood pressure goes down. I mean, you know, uh, you have heart attacks, uh, blood clots form in places that you don't want them to form. Lots of things happen at the right. same time. And and there's been a, a, I saw I ran across an article today. It's, it, there's a. A fairly new, uh, I, I don't know, if a new symptom of COVID-19, and they're calling it COVID toes. Uh, have you seen any any information in the medical journals about about what, what we're calling COVID toes by chance? I saw that in a news article. I really haven't seen it in a medical journal as such. I searched for it. I couldn't find any, okay? Um, you know, mm-hmm. they're talking about this bluish coloration in the uh, tips of the toes and stuff, which is not... In a, knowing the disease process, I don't think that is very, what do you call, unusual because a lot of people are reporting something called vasculitis, which is an inflammation of the blood vessels and um, and forming blood clots. So if you imagine, if you think of it, you can form gangrenous toes and stuff like that. And that's, you know, you can have small blood clots form in there and give you blue toes and, and reduce the oxygen there. So, and that might be what it is. But to be honest, I have not seen it on a medical journal. I'm pretty sure it will come out in the next few weeks. Well, and, and again, we for everybody who just tuned in, we now have uh, Dr. Pradeep with us today, who's been no stranger to this broadcast. Just want to say thank you to him as well as everybody who's watching. If you haven't already, you have a chance uh, to drop a question in the comments. Uh, Lethal Throwers is helping to monitor those uh, for us here at News News. And if we can answer the questions, we will during the short time we have left. So feel free to share the broadcast as well as drop a note in uh, in the comments there and, and ask a question, and we'll get to it uh, if we can. Uh, you know, Dr. Pradeep, let's talk a little bit about um, the, the, the things. When we talk about this conversation, like we had Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest on and he yesterday, and he was talking about uh, – we had some conversation about – the possibility and the phasing in of reopening North Carolina for business. And uh, there's been some conversation about what the president's plan was and how he's had conversations with the governors. And I think I saw a comment where you thought that the president's plan was was fairly spot on and how at least giving guidance. Talk about what it is you think needs to happen for us to actually transition into reopening our uh, economic markets. So at this time, nobody knows exactly what the right thing to do. You can only hope that what you're doing is going to work. So the the president's plan is very simple. What, what he said was, every state has to have a uh, has to meet a great gating criteria. Even before they think about opening, you have to have three things. One, the flu-like illness. Flu, when I say flu-like illness, because the re, a lot of these patients will have flu-like symptoms, and and you don't really, um, you know, you don't know if they are COVID or not. All the flu-like illnesses have to go down. The numbers have to the new case numbers have to go down straight for two weeks. That's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is the COVID cases or the COVID syndromes have to go down by two weeks. You know or the positive test in relation to the number of tests that are being done has to go down for two weeks. So those are the first two things. The third one, (laughs) the hospitals should stop providing crisis care in that, by that, what what it means is you have to have enough supplies in place, like masks, uh, testing, all of them should be in place. So these three things have to be in place before we go any further. If we go further, let's say we, all these three are in place, then you can go to phase one. 
So phase one, phase two, phase three, that's gradually opening up um, uh, all over uh, in a, a businesses. OK, for example, phase three mm -hmm. is uh, phase two is uh, I think phase three is when you open the bars. Phase one, uh, you know, uh, schools open in phase two. So there are different phases to all of this. OK, now each of these phases at the end of the phase, you have to keep looking at the numbers. If the numbers are still not go, uh, uh, starting to climb back up, you go back the phase. OK. So, so there is a plan to go go down and then go back up again. If if in case um, uh, cases start going up. Now, Governor Cooper's plan is really no different from that. You know, he calls it the three T's. I forget the exact. One is testing. You have to have a lot more testing. The second, um, uh, for, uh, I don't know what the T st stood for, but it was more in. You have to be your hospitals. Everything have to be prepared. The third one was mm -hmm. contact tracing, okay, which is something we have really haven't done very well. Um, only um, primarily because we don't have enough personnel for it. Okay, these three things have right. to be done. They have to be put in place before opening it, and then we'll open, see what happens, and uh, through a phased opening, see what happens. And if it uh, if it is not the right time to do it, we will know within a few a few days that the cases are going go up. Not probably within a few days. It'll probably be another week or something before we know the cases go up. Then we can back off and mm -hmm. um, uh, go back to it. Okay. It, you know, and you know, thinking about you, you mentioned schools a while ago in some of your comments uh, there. Uh, there was a question we had on Facebook just a while ago, and it says, "What are your thoughts on uh, reopening schools?" Uh, reopening schools, I really don't think it's going to happen this year. It's probably going to happen um, uh, in fall. I'm hope hoping the new year will, um, the, by fall, uh, things will be back to, uh, after summer that is, things will be back to um, normal for schools. But I really don't think it's going to happen mm -hmm. before uh, uh, the summer starts. In, uh, it will be way too early. And if you think about it, there's a lot of kids that are going to come to school. That means you are putting a bunch of kids, in you, even if you have a couple of them infected, that's going to spread all over the school. And they can, they're going to go take it home and spread it to um, everybody else. And, if, and kids are very social. Unlike us adults, they are very social, you know. So they're going to be uh, touching mm -hmm. each other all over the place, you know. So, um, so they would be the last people to, uh, the schools would be the last people to be opened, I would think. Right. And and I, I, I tend to agree with that. I, I suspect since the order was May 15th, uh, we were only going to public schools, at least we're only going to be in school for another week. I, I can't see that happening. But the governor did say that he would make an announcement about schools sometime this week. And I'm really curious to see what he ends up doing about that. There was another uh, question that says, are we now seeing community spread versus travel related onset uh, in Lenore County? Um, so far, I don't know if there have been any. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are community spread. Um, uh, you know, Butterball has uh, cases. You know, the um, you know all those uh, pr the prisons had uh, cases. So there are all these uh, institutions that have been having cases. So there is community spread, definitely. I'm pr I'm sure, but is that documented? I'm not sure. Okay. And, and there was a you know, this is a, a question that you and I have actually talked about uh, a little bit over the last month or so as we've done these chats. And I really appreciate the time every Wednesday. We were doing them on Sundays and we we, we uh, changed that. But every Wednesday, for sure, we've had you on for the last, uh, you know, seems like five or six weeks. But uh, this one question, I still think is a valid question, especially now as we talk about this idea of phasing in the reopening of our economy. And the question that we got on Facebook is uh, now they're saying that next year we will have an another COVID outbreak uh, that may be worse. Uh, I actually heard an FDA or CDC official say that uh, yesterday. Do you think that we will go through another national shutdown? That's a hard question to answer without knowing what will happen. You know, I did read that article saying the FDA, they think the second peak is going to be much worse than uh, the first one. Um, you know, if that, that happened with the 1918 pandemic too. So uh, will there be a shutdown? It's hard to say, you know. Um, one part of me says, you know, do we just open everything back up and 
you know, uh, let the chips fall where they fall, you know, um, and or but that means you are um, you will have to end up uh, sacrificing a lot of people. Um, that 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 one is a hard question. I I really don't I I really don't think. Yeah, no, I and, and I any... and I get that that has been a lot of the challenge between the 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 policy and the politics and and the medical community is what is this what is this balance and act that we're trying to to do and I, I I think that's where you're seeing a lot of the frustration now from from a lot of people in that you know we've we've done the social distancing. Well, for the most part, not everybody has, but for the most part, uh, we're the the roads aren't as busy so much so that oil prices drop, the the oil for for a barrel even dropped below zero this week. So you're seeing that affect the economy. Um, but th there is uh, one question that uh, that Sarah Bartlett Pierce asked a while ago. I think I think Sarah, we actually discussed this uh, just uh, right before you jumped on, and she was asking about how the death rate is calculated. And, and you and I talked about just uh, before we came on that maybe if we had uh, a lot more testing, then maybe we, we call it something more like a, a case rate a death or something like that. So let's talk so, about uh, the, the, the testing side of this. How, how can we make sure we get more testing? I know LabCorp and FDA made a big announcement yesterday about some home kits so let's talk about how we can get more testing in the hands of people. So the home kits, I'm a little bothered by it um, because and the FDA approved it, which does not mean, just because an FDA approves something does not mean it is the perfect test, okay? The reason why I'm concerned with that test is this one, you, uh, if you, um, the nasal swab, you're only putting it up to the nose. You're not, um, uh, you're not going all the way in. If you think about it, the test that we do in the hospital, the way we do it is we put the swab all the way back into the throat through the nose. It is, it is not a very pleasant test, okay? Um, that's a long um, stick with a, a swab at the end that goes all the way to the back of the throat through the nose. Even that has only a 70% chance of um, uh, coming up with the... Uh, uh, tissue. That is, it has got a 30% false positive, uh, sorry, 70% um, sensitivity. So now you're talking about um, just doing it from the, uh, the front part of the nose. That has to be a whole lot lower than your um, uh, test going all the way. Because if that's what we were doing, then we could have done it easily in the hospital too. We, we, we didn't have to go all the way back into the throat, you know. So mm -hmm. that testing part of it it does bother me and and you can if you have a doctor's order you can order it online all of that bothers me i mean you know you, you shouldn't be sending tests home this is not your blood glucose that you're measuring you know so because it's going to give people a false sense of security that they are not um, you know they they are okay that's one thing the second testing that also bothers me is the antibody testing you know that all there are all these um, vans out there doing drive-by testing. A um, uh, lot of them are not FDA approved. You know, so, some of them I strongly think are scams. You know, so um, you know, uh, I would go to your f physician and have them tested or have them sent you to be tested at an appropriate lab for now. Okay, sometime in the future things might change. That's one thing. Now, um, your question was, how do we increase the um, uh, number of tests? For that, you need to have reagents mm -hmm. and all of that. That is, you know, uh, you know, the companies are making a whole lot more reagents, a whole lot more testing. The capability has gone up a hundredfold since we started. And, and, and dumb, it, dumb it down for me just a second. I, I don't, BJ doesn't know what a reagent is. So tell me what that is and how we can get more of it. Uh, so... Um, a reagent is just, you know, like you, you know, you have the swab, okay? You put it into a um, uh, some kind of chemical. Just think of it as a chemical for which, um, which the with, with that chemical is how you test whether you have the uh, uh, gene of the virus or not, okay? So you mm -hmm. don't have enough of that chemical because you have to make that chemical because every other hospital out there is asking for it. Every other practice out there is asking for it. Every every lab 
um, core. All of them are asking for that um, uh, chemical. So, so we are running mm -hmm. out of chemical far more than we are running out of the machines to uh, test it. Wow. It, it, it seems like a, you know, we would talk a little bit about the supply chain of toilet paper and household goods, the, the supply chain of our medical, uh, the medical, the PPEs, and even things as testing kits uh, is uh, quite alarming as well. Uh, in, in fact, uh, I want to know if, did I miss a question there? I want to make sure I didn't miss a question. Uh, I see, uh, look, I see uh, Tracy Howell. She says she agrees with Dr. Pradeep. Uh, Sarah Barlow, thank you so much. Terry Turner, thank you so much. Uh, for, um, for 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 watching, thank you everybody for for jumping on. Uh, yeah, I, I do want to kind of close out with um, some of your thoughts of how we how we move forward. You know, certainly we've been practicing this idea of social distancing now for a few weeks, and uh, we we never in, in, any day the governor could announce either more limitations or restrictions, or he could reduce them. You know, tell us what you're advising uh, your family and uh, your your neighbors and your friends and your patients uh, as as we move forward with this uh, pandemic. So right now, what I would tell you is what we do is social distancing. We wash our hands as much as possible, wear a mask whenever we go out as much as possible, uh, you know. Uh, and I feel like this is going to be there for quite some time. I don't think we are going to be out of it within the next two weeks, the next one month. It's going to be there for six months to a year. So we will all have to practice good social hygiene, you know. Uh, now, you know, which means washing, being careful what we touch and, and all of those things and uh, handshakes and all of that, you know. So... I tell, you know, what we do at home is to make sure that uh, we come in, we take off our, um, our work clothes, everything, um, you know, wash our hands, take a shower as soon as possible, and then go about, go about whatever we can do. Well, the, the great uh, colleague, I posed this question a while ago. He said that so many folks think that this viral event is overblown and insist on comparing it to the flu. He said, I've, I've read that beyond the actual disease, it tends to have uh, lasting severe side effects and damage for the folks who survive. Is that accurate info? And if so, shouldn't it be discussed more to maybe drive home the point of how serious this really is? Um, I agree. I mean, people always talk about the recovery rate and they say, what, what is the recovery rate? Unfortunately for this, you don't know what the recovery rate is. I mean, is the recovery rate, when you say the recovery rate, is it not dying? that is your recovery or is it completely back to normal a lot of these people when they leave the hospital are still on oxygen which means you have not um you have not recovered okay mm, you know you still have to you know continue to do what you're doing you know uh, you are if you're on oxygen, you still haven't recovered. So what percentage of the people are on oxygen? What percentage of the people have lungs that are still bad? Nobody knows, okay? No, nobody knows mm -hmm. all of that. Over the next few months, we're going to get a lot more reports of it. Then we will know exactly what the true recovery rate, that is, you're almost back to normal recovery rate is. And I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree with Greg Colley. I mean, that is an important thing to know. And this is not the flu. I mean, you know, I have posted about it like a hundred times, you know, this is not the flu. This is nothing related to the flu. It, it, it's a completely different virus. It should be treated completely different. All right. Well, look, I, I want to say a big thank you to you, uh, Dr. Pradeep, for continuing to come on the broadcast here. Sorry to hear about the patients that have been under your care in the past as well. And just want to say uh, for everybody watching, uh, we need you to take care of yourselves too. So make sure you you continue practicing social distancing and watching at your hands. Thank you so much for jumping on. Appreciate your time and your your knowledge. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, and for everybody watching, I want to say a big uh, shout out to uh, LaPortia Gardner, uh, Stephanie Town, Karen Jackson. Thank you so much for dropping some stars uh, in the comments. I really appreciate that. Our entire team does. And look, and if you enjoyed uh, what Dr. Pradeep had to say today or, or just you, you got some value out of the conversation, uh, tag, uh, tag a, let's do this, tag a healthcare worker or first responder and just tag their name 
and just say, thank you so much, or, or write them a, a, a specific message just to say thank you uh, for, for what they're, they're doing. Uh, our team at News News has, has tried our best to keep you up to date with all the latest information. Uh, at times, it feels like we're drinking out of a fire hose. Uh, but also, you know, we tried to modify uh, some of the, uh, the information we're putting out based on what we're seeing uh, come out of the governor's office or from our state legislator's office, uh, even the president's office and how that affects us here locally and even what's happening here locally uh, with our own uh, policies. Uh, but the biggest thing is to know that uh, this virus is still here, that there is this uh, real conversation around reopening our economy. And tomorrow we have a special guest. I'll tell you a little more about that uh, tomorrow. I think I mentioned it yesterday, uh, but just need to work out some details uh, where we want to have more of a conversation about uh, this reopen NC movement, uh, because we think it is uh, a, a conversation that people are having and uh, so we tried to get all sides of the story. So we look forward to having that uh, conversation again uh, tomorrow. So I think you all can agree with me that uh, we need uh, more testing and, and uh, more, um, more people washing their hands and practicing social distancing to best their ability. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate Dr. Travis Town behind the scenes on our uh, live stream, our chief technical engineer, and to Aletha Thrower for uh, making uh, all the comments and keeping up with uh, everything that's, that is uh, – uh, happening here on social. Thank y'all so much for, for tagging uh, healthcare worker, first responder. Make sure that you, you see some of the articles on News News about that as well. Join our Facebook group. Uh, text the keyword NN uh, to 484848 for our breaking news text alert. That's the keyword NN to 484848. And as always, please make sure you wash your hands.